From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. I want to I tell the story of Zacchaeus one more time. You might call it Zacchaeus, but I called it Zacchaeus all my life, so I'll start just like we used to when I was uh, growing up. So if you'd like to read with us, we're in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 19. St. Luke, chapter number 19. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. Notice that. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press. There's a big crowd, and Zacchaeus was little of stature, it says. He ran before, thank you, Chris, he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully, and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be the guest with a man that was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Amen. Amen. Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation Come to this house, for so as he also is the son of Abraham. And then I, this would be a good text, for the Son of Man yep. is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. That's the purpose of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that the story of Zacchaeus is a very good illustration of the salvation that comes to people. Any people. A lot of folks don't think that rich people can get saved. Right, yeah. But Zacchaeus was a rich man and he made it. Amen. Jesus said this, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for them to trust in riches right. to be saved. Yeah. Amen. Who then can be saved, they said. Uh, and Jesus said, that's impossible with men. But with God, all things Amen. are possible. Amen. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Amen. I want to preach on this story about the man that was seeking and he found. About a little man that became a big man. About a rich man that met the rich man who became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich. Right, right, amen. About a host that, that became a guest. Our Heavenly Father, thank you this morning for, Lord, just for the privilege to pray and be in the house of God and be in church. And Lord, I know that, that my, uh, my ability is nil. I need, Father, you to help me this morning. I pray, God, that you would help me I pray that we could be able to preach, Lord, the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, for every person that's here today, God, that they may get something from this story that they can carry back to their homes or back to their community, back to their school, back to their job. Lord, I pray that, that we might tell them the story of Jesus. I'd be remiss, <clears throat> Father, if I didn't pray for that request that Caden had yeah. about his dear friend yeah. that he met there this week. God, I pray that you will be done. <clears throat> but Lord, I pray that it would be your will that you would give them uh, grace for this need and Lord, that you would heal that dear lady. 
I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus did a lot of visiting when he was on earth. Uh, he had uh, places, cities that he came to, different cities here and there. And this is one of them. He came to a place called Jericho. Uh, he would have passed on uh, there at Jericho. But there was some business that detained him. They tell me that Jericho is the oldest city in the world. I don't know whether that's true or not. They tell me it's the lowest city in the world. And I remember that, that one time back in 1980, I had the privilege to go to the Holy Land. And there's a restaurant that sits in Jericho on, in the, the lowest spot on earth. So I done been there. You can't get no lower than your preacher. I've been to the lowest spot on earth. In Elisha's day, they needed a healing for the water. Yeah. I had the opportunity to drink from that spring. That he, You remember he threw the salt in and, yeah. and uh, the spring was healed. There was a healing water that came from that visitation of God's man there. And I'd like to say, according to the book of Ezekiel, there's a healing stream that comes out of the throne of God. And I believe that Lord Jesus Christ is a healing stream that came to my town. And he, I got a drink of that water and I haven't been dry since. I would also like to say that Zacchaeus uh, is getting ready to get a drink from that healing stream. It was a Jericho that Jesus visited uh, a blind Bartimaeus, if you remember. That's the same town there. But that wasn't the only town he visited. There were folks there at Jacob's Well, which is in Samaria, that he came by and saw a woman that was thirsty. There was a man laying at the pool of Bethesda that needed his healing. There was a time when he visited Caesarea Philippi because there was a woman up there that had a daughter that need healed. Uh, when he visited the leper, uh, the leper was made whole. Uh, when he visited a funeral, uh, he broke up the procession. Uh, when he visited a grave, uh, old Lazarus came forth. Uh, when he visited Jerusalem, he wept over that city. If you had known the day that Jesus came to visit you, is that what he said? Amen. I'm glad he visited my house. Amen. Are, you, Amen. are you glad that he visited your house? Yeah. I'm glad he came to see Amen. me. Well, here he comes in this story. He's dealing with a man named Zacchaeus and demonstrates exactly why he came to earth. Yeah, that's right. There in verse number 10, it said, He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And I believe Zacchaeus could say, thank God for the day that he came to visit me. Well, but Zacchaeus had a limitation on his abilities to try to get to the Lord. Verse number 3 says Zacchaeus was, was little of stature. He wasn't a very tall guy, is the way I understand that. Just a little fellow. Uh, uh, but, but thank the Lord he wasn't hindered by his money. A lot of people are hindered by their money. But it's not, uh, it's not money that's evil. It's the love of money. And i got to say that I know some poor people that loves money. Amen. They're tighter than the bark on a tree. I've said this before. Uh, they wouldn't give a nickel to see an ant eat a bale of hay. They're so tight they squeak when they walk. Uh, but in verse number eight, Zacchaeus said, half of my goods uh, I will give to the poor. Uh, I don't know about the provision, uh, amen, but he said, if I have took anything uh, by false accusation, I'll restore the man four times. I've never saw 40 some years of preaching. I've never saw somebody say, hey preacher, I stole something I want to give him four times. What? Amen. Scholars differ on the meaning of that. Uh, was he going to start now or was that his practice? Uh, you know, he, he being a publican, he may have heard the preaching of John the Baptist. Yeah. John the Baptist had preached that very thing in Luke chapter 3. Yeah. And I don't know, he may have even been a friend of Matthew 
Matthew was a publican, if you remember. Maybe he knew and, and was uh, cognizant of, of Matthew's conversion. And maybe that uh, weighed on his heart. Uh, but either way, Zacchaeus is a better man uh, than those who would condemn him for being a publican. They bragged about not being a publican. Isn't that what they'd say? Oh, Lord, I'm glad I'm not a publican. What is a publican, preacher? A publican was a tax collector. Yeah. And there's not very many people like the IRS. <laughs> I don't even care for that assessor that Don was fellowshipping yeah. with. Not, not very many people like tax people. Uh, they, but they couldn't cause money. Money was not uh, uh, the problem. It was not Zacchaeus's limitation is yeah. what I'm saying. The love of money. Zacchaeus, uh, I, I think it means innocent. I suggest uh, that he gets a bum rap in our story. Uh, it's possible for somebody to be honest and in a crooked occupation. It's, it, it's possible for somebody to have a job, but you don't see how they could be a Christian. I think Kim Davis had such a job. Uh, it's possible for somebody to be where the majority of people are dishonest. It's possible that Zacchaeus was honest. Amen. What I'm saying is that you can live for God in a crooked world. Amen. And if you can't live for God in a crooked world, then you'll never shine where it's bright. If you can't shine where it's dark. We shine, didn't Peter say, or Paul say that in Philippians, we shine as lights in a dark place. One of them said that you had to go look at that. In Luke chapter 15 uh, and verse 1, uh, uh, just to have that occupation was equated with being a, a sinner. Right. To Israel, to the, to the Jew that hated his job where he consorted with Russia, I mean consorted with the, the Romans, uh, 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 they, they hated him for just being, it made him unclean in their sight for him just to fool with those Gentiles. Rejection of Jesus' words closed the pockets of the rich young ruler. Yeah. Yeah. But reception of Jesus' words opened the pockets right. of this man named Zacchaeus. Amen. And I think it will open your pockets. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Zacchaeus had a, a, a lot of money, or, but that wasn't his limitation. Uh, uh, wasn't the love of money. Verse number 3 he says because he's little. Yeah. He was little of stature. He was too short. Watch this. He was too short to look Jesus in the eye. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's Everybody right. here yeah. is too short yeah. to yeah. look Amen. Jesus in the eye. Amen. That's right. Would you like me to show you that in the Bible? I will show you that. Amen. For all have sinned and come short Amen. of the glory yeah. of God. Zacchaeus was too short. That's my limitation. That's your limitation. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And unless you be converted and become as a little child, you'll know why. What would a kid do? I know what a kid would do. Especially a boy, he'd climb a tree if he got a chance. Amen. When I was in Jericho, they only had one only have one sycamore tree in town or the, in, when I was over there. Only one tree. And I'm sure it wasn't the same tree. But I, I, it's probably a descendant, would you agree, of that tree? And they said here, that we was on this big old tour bus, and they said, well, if you want a picture of the only sycamore in, in uh, Jericho, you need to get off the bus. And so I got off the bus, and, uh, and I'm running out here, and this is this big old, Big old tree. It ain't a sycamore tree like we got. You know, it's a fig tree is really what it is. But I'm out there taking this picture. Everywhere you looked, there was beggars. And I didn't notice this beggar. Hey, man, he was reaching for me. He was crawling. He was down on his knees, and he was reaching for me. And I looked down and saw that guy. Son, I jumped like I was a cartoon, if you know what I'm talking about. I jumped up, uh, run two or three steps before my feet ever hit the ground. I jumped back on that bus because I just knowed he is a leper, and I had gold contract leprosy just trying to get me a picture. 
got on the bus and I thought him one American dollar out the window. You know what I'm saying? But, but it scared me. What, what I'm talking about, uh, he was a little guy and he couldn't see for the crowd. Uh, 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 many folk are too tall, uh, amen, for Jesus. Amen. Many of them are way too high. And in order for us to get little, we need to get big. For, for us to get big, we need to get little. Amen. Just so happened that God knew Zacchaeus' limitations and somewhere back in time, I don't know how long, but God said, well, I'll plant me a little sycamore tree right here because yeah, Zacchaeus will need it. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, I believe God had the tree there. I mean, whenever I needed saved, before I ever got saved, God planned a little Baptist church down there, said, I'll use this little place, uh, amen, to get Randy saved. If we would see Jesus, we're too short. But there's a tree where we can see. Calvary is the tall tree where short people meet the Lord. Zacchaeus was looking for a place where he could see and he ran until he he found that place. Are you looking? Would you really like to get in touch with Jesus? You really would? Are you looking? Jesus knew exactly where Zacchaeus was. And he knows where you are. I think that whenever he's walking along, it looks like, you know, he's not even paying any attention to Zacchaeus up there. But, but whenever, he got, whenever he got there, not only did he know he was up there, but he knew his name. Yeah, yeah, there it is. He got there where, where Zacchaeus was and he stopped and looked up. <laughs> Amen. He come there the night where I was. And Amen. He stopped and looked down yeah. as I was kneeling there at that altar. Remember the purpose of Jesus coming, verse number 10. Uh, the purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, Jesus wanted Zacchaeus. And Jesus wants you. Amen. And Jesus wants me. Yeah. And that's why he came. So I, I was thinking about th- that the limitation of, of, of Zacchaeus. And then I think about the invitation of Zacchaeus. The Lord, whenever he stopped there, he said, Zacchaeus, uh, uh, I want to I wanna go home with you. Yeah. <laughs> There's an invitation. He invited himself. He yeah. 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 said, I'd like to go home with you. Amen. He not only wanted to clean up his heart, but he wanted to clean up his house. Amen. You know that will happen if you get your heart cleaned up, your house will clean up. Amen. In verse number 10, he uses the term the Son of Man for himself. He did not use the term the the Son of God, though he was, but he used that term that identified him with everybody. He could have said he was the Son of Abraham, but he didn't. He could have said, amen, uh, uh, he could have said he was the son of Jacob, but he didn't. He, he admitted that, that Zacchaeus was, but he said the son of man. That Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 teaches uh, uh, that all us uh, that have faith of Abraham, we get in on the very same promise that he did. Amen. There's Jews that are Jews on the outside only. I think that that's Baptist will work there too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know about the guy that went to jail and he wrote back to his pastor and said, Pastor, you'll be glad there's more Baptists in here than he is anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, that's probably true. Yeah. I know everybody in there is saved. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I know, I preached to them, witnessed to them, talked to them. Every one of them I could find was saved. Yeah. What are you in here for? Well, I knifed this dude down there in the alley, but I'm saved. I've been saved since I was a kid. Jesus did not address himself as the king of the Jews. He was. He did not address himself as the son of God. He was the son of David. He was. But he addressed himself as the son of man, and he said the son of man came to seek and to save sinners. That's what Jesus came to earth for. Jesus saves from A to Z. 
I'd say Abraham to Zacchaeus. Yeah. And then I think Randy would be in there somewhere. Yeah. And if he goes from A to Z, I believe you could find some place to put your name in there. Yeah. The invitation is whosoever will, let him come. When Jesus invited himself into Zacchaeus' house, I think about Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 where he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, open the door. I'm trying to come in. If you'll open the door, I'll come in and I'll sup with you and you with me. Jesus agitated the Pharisees by that, but thank God, he visited the Zacchaeus over it. Yeah, man. The, the Pharisees, they said, man, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. Yeah. Here he claims to be the Messiah. And he's going over there with a publican. He, he's, he's eating with sin. Let me ask you something. Who else on earth could he eat with? Yeah, amen. Amen. Well, if he come to your house, would you say, well, I'm not a sinner? Who else? If he was looking for a righteous man, where would he go? Paul said there's none righteous, no, not one. All of sin to come short of the glory of God. I, I, I give your attention once more to verse 10. It said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. If you could make it without Jesus' help, you wouldn't be a sinner. You'd be exempt from everything I ever preached in this building. Yeah. If you could make it to heaven by your effort, by your works, by your ceremony, Amen. if you could make it, then everything I've said for the last 39 some years here in this building, just disregard it. Yeah. Pharisees were agitated that this so-called Messiah would eat with sinners. James said, don't deceive yourself, man. Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you don't do it, if you know to do it, amen, and you don't do it. I mean, where would that start? If you know to go to church and you didn't, If you know, if you, boy, that, that would, let me get off that. That would preach forever. But when Jesus came to Jericho, he had in mind this man named Zacchaeus. It was a personal invitation. He didn't say to the multitude, the crowd that was around him, he didn't say nothing. It's Zacchaeus. He called his name and said, you come down. It was not only a personal invitation, but it was a demanding invitation. Come down. Hey, you can't stay up there and my work be done. You have got to make a move. Amen. Make haste and come down. It was an humbling thing. It was immediate. Today, I'll abide at your house. Everybody says, well, I'll get saved tomorrow or the next revival we have, or the next time I feel the Spirit of God. Have you ever heard that one? Yeah, yeah. Hey man, I'd come now. Amen. It might not be another next time. Yeah. He wants to abide at my house. I want him to abide at my house. He said there a, a perspective a invitation when he said, I want to abide with you. The Savior abides with me. Amen. Then I'll close just by simply saying, he said, I want to I wanna go to your house. I wonder if Jesus would just come and he'd walk into church and say, well, I'd sure like to go home with you. I wonder if we'd say, well, let me go straighten up my house first. 
I mean, I got some liquor bottles by there I'd like to be rid of before you come in. Or I, I got whatever, you name it, you, you know what's there. I'd sure like to be rid of that before Jesus comes. But boy, in condes- condescension, he didn't say clean up. Amen. He right. said, you, you let me come home with you. I'll clean up your house. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Well, I said when it started, I wanted to tell that story of Zacchaeus one more time. I've preached it before. I thank the Lord for that story. But isn't it good that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost? Maybe you'd just like to slip out of your seat today and walk down here with these Dear folks that already came, boys and girls, already here. Maybe Jesus is speaking to you. I'd like to go home with you today. I'd like to abide in your house. He could come by pew number two and say, Sarah, Jeannie, I'd like to go home with you probably step over on pew number two this side and say, Shirley, Michelle, Macy, Marvin, I'd like to go home with you. I could go all, I could go all down, down through the church, call everybody's name. But in honesty, he stops by your pew, hadn't he? Shake your peaking little head, as John the Baptist says. He stops by your pew and offers you invitation. Whosoever will, let the water of life freely. Well, it's prayer time. I wonder if you want your preacher pray for you. Slip up your hand, say pray for me, preacher. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank God for these hands. Slip it up, take it right back down. Say pray for me this morning, preacher. Thank you. Amen. One more just before I pray. 